Hey guys, Veggie Gamer back, and I thought I'd do a review of sorts. Veggie Nights. I'm not very, uh, I'm not very good at doing movie reviews and everything, but I thought I'd give them my two cents because I've seen the Sonic the Hedgehog 2 movie now, guys. I didn't realize it came out on the first in the UK. I thought it was coming out on the eighth, like in America. But um, I went to see it. Big time Sonic, old school Sonic was like, uh, the old school Sonic games guys were huge for me. They really, really were. If, if, you're, if you're used to my channel, you probably know that already. Back in, uh, you know, I, uh, as a child, I used to play the heck out of these games. It was actually one of my favorite game series uh, w w when I was very young. And obviously, you know, it, it, Sonic has not had like the great, greatest history of games later on and so on, but... With the first movie, I think I was like everyone, I was going in there thinking, okay, it's probably going to suck, but I'm going to give it a, a, my chance and everything. And I freaking loved it, guys. I actually really enjoyed it. Yes, the first movie is a flawed movie. It's by no means perfect. No movie's perfect apart from... I know, I really enjoyed the last Harry Potter movie, guys. I really did. I, I, I've recently done reactions to the Harry Potter movies on, on, on my channel, guys. I actually posted Deathly Eyes Part 2 this past Sunday. That's an amazing movie, but yes, back on track though. The Sonic, the first Sonic movie, um, is far from perfect, guys. But I, I came out of there really enjoying it, and I've watched it several times since, guys. It's a very innocent, just fun movie. Um, like I say, flawed in places, and in my opinion, Sonic the Hedgehog 2 fixes most of those flaws. I think that uh, for a lot of the flaws in in the first one. Uh, I, I was willing to forgive it a lot because it's a Sonic movie. Sonic looked great. They got his, they, they gave him this great childish personality, which suited him so perfectly. And I'm delighted to say that that has carried over into the sequel as well. I thought that was like one of the smartest moves of of the first movie, where they made him a bit nuts. Like he, he's not completely there, or anything, and he's like this very very childish person. And that's kind of the storyline of Sonic 2, guys. The fact that he is this childish person, person, but he. Wants to be this this renowned hero and everything uh, so I'll go into my thoughts in a spoiler free section first and then after a while I'll skip into the, to the spoiler section I'll give you a, a, a good chance to switch it off if, if you're if you haven't seen the movie yet but yes let's go into my general thoughts so like I say I feel like I ironed out a lot of the problems that was with the first one um, there were still some like issues like one, one thing which I, I noticed uh, quite a few people remarking upon in the first movie is how it seems to be inconsistent how fast these characters can move. There are a couple of moments in this movie where I'm thinking, well, surely he should have been able to just get around that without no problem or everything. And, yeah. But again, uh, I'm willing to forgive it. Um, another thing which I've seen some people referring to is who this movie is actually going to be good for. I think for Sonic fans, if you're a true Sonic fan, guys, I think you're gonna love this movie, especially the final act. Um, I just had a smile on my face the entire time. It's absolutely gorgeous. I think if you're a video game in a video game fan in general, and you 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 you, you, you like Sonic and everything, I think you'll absolutely enjoy it as well. Um, I think the kids will absolutely love it because like th th they're adorable characters very well like, animated and everything the, the personality the voice acting for these characters are absolutely brilliant as well So I think the kids will absolutely like it So I mean that if you're going into this movie and it's absolutely not for you You're not gonna like the movie guys if you're like an adult who doesn't like you know Cartoony characters or video game storylines or storylines that don't have a lot of depth. I'm sh sure y You're not gonna have a hugely in-depth storyline for Sonic the Hedgehog, and so if you're buying a ticket hoping for, you know, Shawshank Redemption, you you may be disappointed. But if you're going into Sonic 2 expecting what you know, expecting a Sonic movie, especially in that final act, guys, I can't see you not enjoying it. Really, it's again not a perfect movie. There is, in fact, one scene which we'll get into in the spoilers where I was like, this is actually quite embarrassing to be sitting through watching. Um, but again, I forgave it though, and it wasn't that long a scene, but we'll go into it in, in the spoilers. And the silliness of the world, uh, is bordering on pushing too far. One thing that I loved about Sonic 1 and Sonic 2 is that the human characters, they're not just completely plain human characters. Like, say the bar scene in the first movie. Um, like, the, the characters in that bar are really ridiculous characters. <laughs> they're not, like... The fact that the that the, the barmaid doesn't realise that this that this this 
hedgehog wearing cowboy hat is not a human child and everything. I love that silliness, and in the sequel, the silliness does ramp up a bit much, particularly around, I think her name is Rachel. Um, I need to look these names up real quick. Yeah, Rachel, she gets her own like story arc in this one, guys, and it it's it's so so close to pushing pushing on to actually being annoyingly silly, but it it holds it just about holds it, guys. So uh, Rachel is uh, yeah Maddie's sister. Um, loving that Maddie got some more to do in this movie as well, because in the first one, it was notable how how little she did it, it, it was almost like ridiculous how she was she just seemed to be there but she did extremely little uh she gets a lot more involved in this one we also have returning characters like agent stone i in my opinion agent stone was possibly the greatest thing in the first one and he's brilliant in the second one as well we get wade back is again wade the uh, the other cop uh, who uh, you know tom is the sheriff and uh, wade is like the deputy uh and wade is great Again, it's bordering on being a bit... His character is incredibly dumb. Where it's almost stupid. But he has a hilarious line in it. I found it hilarious anyway. I think that I was the only one who audibly laughed in the cinema when he said it. But uh, we'll get to that in the spoilers as well. But in general, guys, I think it was... Uh, an absolute treat and I do think I prefer it more than the first one there are things which I feel I had to forgive in like the first half of it but second half I, I just think it was brilliant I really do if you if 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 you're willing to accept that you know it's a situation where there's these emeralds there's a hedgehog trying to get it there's a mad doctor trying to go over it and the story isn't going to go too deep or anything I think you're going to have a great time with this movie I certainly did Actually, talking about the human character, that actually reminds me of something which I saw trending on Twitter. How um, apparently the, the first reviewers for uh, Sonic the Hedgehog 2 were saying that they that 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 there wasn't enough of the human the interesting human characters in it. That surprises me, guys, because there is more human uh, the, the human characters in it definitely get more time in this movie. Um, sure. The, uh, the cartoon characters get more time but like I say Rachel and Maddie absolutely do have their moment to shine particularly with Maddie guys I sing it before but it's so good that she actually got something to do in this movie Tom is brilliant I, again I think that he was one of the best things about the, the, the sequel um, but he's great in this one as well I guess in a way he might be in it slightly less than he was in the, yeah because in the first one he absolutely was your second main character after Sonic obviously in this one you add tails and knuckles to it, and obviously Tom is going to have to take a step back and everything. But to be expected, guys, and they they do it where the, the humans do have their own storylines going on, and then we pop back to Sonic and the gang and so on. So I absolutely think that they, they do have time to shine. And if, if I guess if some people genuinely wanted more of the human characters, then then that's fine. But Again, if you're going into a Sonic movie wanting there to be a really in-depth human storyline, what's what's the what's the oh yeah that's right Godzilla movies are renowned for that aren't they? I haven't seen I don't think I've seen any of the Godzilla new new movies at all. Not even like the 2001 in fact. No, I haven't. But I think that from what you hear, um, the Godzilla movies, but Godzilla is in it for like two minutes tops the, in the entire thing, and you know. It, it, and it focuses purely on the human characters. If you want a Sonic movie, guys, you want it to focus on Sonic, the Emeralds, Tails, Knuckles, Robotnik, and so on. Um, but yeah, some people said that they wanted more human stuff. I thought the human stuff was really good uh, with what it was. At the end of the first one, we, uh, it, during the credits before the Tails reveal, you had this lovely like animated 2D computer game sequence of basically the movie like Sonic like playing through the movie as if it's a level again that's back in in Sonic the Hedgehog 2 as well and it's brilliant I freaking loved it in fact it's uh, it's such a great satisfying bit where you're basically re-watching it but in the classic Mega Drive um, Genesis graphics and so I really enjoyed that but all in all guys I really did enjoy it it's certainly not a a 
a flawless movie, and I don't think it's ever going to be. I don't think that there's ever going to be a Sonic movie where everyone is going to be, oh my god, that was perfect, don't change a thing. There's definitely going to be people that are not going to like certain things. There are certain things in this movie which I was not a complete fan of, but I will go into that in the spoilers. I highly recommend you go to see this, guys. I'm not a professional movie <laughs> reviewer, but if you have any affection for Sonic ga games, guys, especially Sonic uh, Heroes, in fact, um, uh, and anything earlier, I think that you, there's certainly stuff in this which will make you smile, and so I highly recommend it. Uh, I will now move over to the spoiler section, so if you go and see it, you can come back and we can discuss that in the comments um, once, once, you, once you're up to speed, but... Up to speed, Sonic! Ah! I made a joke. Okay, spoiler uh, discussion. I hope that my review section wasn't too vague, guys. Like I say, I don't know how to do reviews, I really don't, but... Um, Without just saying, I really enjoyed it a lot. <laughs> but uh, we'll go into the spoilers now, and this is where we'll be, we'll be talking about some of the things which I didn't like so much. I guess that, I sh that we should go straight in with like the the big surprises, should we? I mean, if you if you seen the movie, if you it, unless you just don't care and you're just watching this video regardless. But okay, let's go into it. Supersonic, isn't it, guys? I didn't expect that to be in the second movie. Uh, it's a great moment because. Uh, Robotnik actually has all the emeralds in, in this movie. That's why on the trailer he's like looking super powerful and he like strips the metal from green hills, all like uh, like trains going past and everything, to build this massive uh, robot um, to fight uh, Sonic uh, Tails and at this point Knuckles as well. But so Super Sonic being in it, he looked fantastic and he is OP as well, guys. Purposely OP. Uh, that was a wonderful. I didn't expect it. I've okay. I actually genuinely thought that maybe the first movie would have like one emerald, and then maybe like there would be other emeralds. But no, all the emeralds are there, guys. Obviously, we, we can go into like you know what they call super emeralds or what they call the, the ones from uh, uh, Sonic Three and Sonic Sonic Knuckles. Um, but yeah, Super Sonic being in it was genuinely a surprise to me. I didn't expect it at all. Obviously, that means that we technically got super. Um, Robotic as well. No super tails. I wonder if he seems to have birds flying around him and so on. But yeah, that was a big surprise to me. The other big surprise, guys. I mean, one thing. Um, Walter. Uh, was it Commander Walter is back? The guy who did the Olive Garden comment in in the first one, which was like a you know, big talking point, I think, for a lot of reviewers. And they really doubled down on that joke. Uh, the same as Agent Stone with the Austrian uh, steamed goat milk. That is referenced so many times in the sequel, guys. It's like they thought, ah, people found those lines noteworthy. And I'll say noteworthy because I think everyone loved this steamed Austrian goat milk line, guys. But um, the Olive Garden thing, I think most people like, well, like, oh, that's really crappy product placement in there. And I think the writers thought, ah, oh, you think that, right? Okay. Let's have bring Commander Wal Wal or General Walter, Walter, let's just say, back. And have every single thing that you say have the word Olive Garden in it. It's stupid. It really is. He's a character which I don't feel, feel like we needed to see again. But there is a reason for it though, guys. He is like the head of GUN Gun. And uh, yeah, as soon as that's revealed. I don't think that was revealed in the trailers. If it was, I apologise. But I don't think that you know, Gun being an organisation in this u universe was revealed. But as soon as you find out it is, you think, okay, I think I know who the big surprise in the because we all knew there's going to be a big surprise in the post credits. Uh, I think I know who the big surprise is going to be, and it is, guys, Shadow. Uh, all my reviews, are like, are like you know, of the trailer reactions, everything like that, I, I, I've been saying, I know that a lot of people want Shadow in it, but you can't have Shadow coming in the second movie. No, Shadow has been confirmed, essentially confirmed for the next movie, guys. I didn't see that coming. Now, I know that... Oh, this is where people are... Okay, like okay. it. If you're about to click off the video, I apologise for what I'm about to say, okay? Shadow is not my favourite Sonic character. I never liked him basically at all. He's basically... He's as fast as Sonic, but he has a gun and drives motorcycles? It seemed a bit poochy, in my opinion, guys, but that's just my opinion. I know that he is a hugely popular character. It is, in my opinion, if it counts as a Sonic game, 
Shadow the Hedgehog is the worst Sonic game, in my opinion. Some people say Sonic R, oh, guys. I freaking love Sonic R. I really did, guys. It, again, not a perfect game, but once you get the controls down, it's a, it's a playable game, and like it looks very, it looks very nice at the time and everything. The music's uh, incredibly cheesy and so on. But yeah, Shadow the Hedgehog, as a character and as uh, as a game as well, not my cup of tea. That being said, the fact that they're making that leap, um, I think definitely confirms that we're not just getting Shadow next time. Because obviously the last movie ended with um, with just Tails, and everyone was like saying, oh, I hope Knuckles is in it, but we didn't know he was gonna, he was gonna be in it until, um, was it Idris's glove post, uh, post where, like, where, where, like, where, where he says, um, yeah, that, that, I, I'm not sure if that was when we had Knuckles confirmed. It may have been before then, but I think that it was likely that Knuckles was going to be showing up. With Shadow being confirmed, I think that that really does open the floodgates for a lot of characters, guys. I'll be honest, I'm surprised it wasn't a female character getting teased in it. Um, but that being said, do you really want to tease a good guy? Uh, obviously, I think Blaze is, um, starts off as a villain, right? I'm not, sure. I'm, not, I'm not completely up on my Blaze origins, I must admit, guys. But, um, yeah, so I think that, I think you've got to have Amy in the next one. I, I think you really do. It, it'd just be strange if you have all these characters and they just all happen to be, uh, guys. Um, I think that if Amy is going to be in it, I think that she'll be getting yet another redesign, which I think is fine, guys, because she's had several in, in her history. Obviously, you, uh, you had, like, the, the pink Sonic look originally. Then you had the, the, the bob cut look and everything, and then she had another redesign, I think, later on for... Is it Sonic Boom or something like that? I've never seen Sonic Boom or play the game. Um, but yes, I think it would be great to get to Amy in there. I do think it also opens up the floodgates of characters like Rouge to be turning up as well. I do think that if if, if, <laughs> if Rouge is going to be in it, I think that she's going to have the biggest character redesign of, of all of them. But um, I, th I do think that it opens the floodgates for Rouge to be in the, in the future. I'm just surprised that Shadow is in this, guys. I, it, it does seem like an odd choice to me. But if you're trying to get the... You know the largest Sonic community into checking out these um, into these movies. I guess it makes sense because I know he is a hugely popular character. I've just ranted on about Shadow for way too long. Let's move on. I'm not going to allow this review to just be a list of the Easter eggs that I spotted, guys. But there are a lot of Easter eggs to be spotted. Essentially, Labyrinth Zone is in this movie. And I think that's really nice because I think it was actually Labyrinth Zone which had the OWL logo in the, in the bricks. I think it was in the original game and that all comes obviously gets completely paid off with uh, Longclaw having this uh, th this backstory where her tribe used to fight the echidnas stopping them from getting the ultimate power of all the chaos emeralds and later on Sonic, uh, Knuckles and Robotic go to Labyrinth Zone, guys, and it looks great. You even have the water slide where, like, you know, Sonic's, like, like fl flying down it uh, uncontrollably. That was a really nice reference. There are lots of references to be had. The Sonic ab uh, uh, Adventure pose is uh, is in, oh, in that scene. We can talk about it now. The scene which I did, like, the dance scene, guys. <sighs> sure, it's cute and everything, but it's... What I didn't like about it is like you had Sonic and Tails not being able to uh, able to dance, um, and and then like you know they're, they're like you know bumping into each other and tripping each other up and everything. And then I think it's Sonic or Tails like says, "Hey, I've got an idea," and then they're just able to dance really well. It it was incredibly cringy that dance sequence for me, guys. I maybe kids loved it, but for me it was yeah, that was a bit I was thinking. This, what the hell am I doing with my life sitting in the cinema watching this? That is in the um, Siberia uh, scene, which is essentially the bar scene from the first movie, guys, where uh, they turn up and, like, you know, cause uh, a lot of ruckus and everything, and then it all gets sorted out by the end because they danced a lot. They were about to get thrown into a fire as well, which is <laughs> interesting. But that scene for me, yeah, the dancing, it was dumb in my opinion <laughs> but the rest of the scene was pretty damn funny actually in this uh, Siberian bar 
like I say, uh, Agent Stone is back in this one, and he is brilliant, guys. I, 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 he is absolutely one of my favourite aspects of these movies. I think he's just so, so adorable. When Robotnik comes into the cafe, and like he's like, who's back? And he's like, really delighted and everything. And then Knuckles walks in, and like Robotnik says something like about his how the latte could do with more mushrooms, because he's had to be drinking on his mushrooms all the time. And it shows Agent Stone's face, and he looks genuinely like he has tears in his eyes. He looks so broken, it's really sad. I love Agent Stone, guys. There's a very cheesy uh, Easter egg with him when they're in the big robot, uh, robot Robotnik at the end. And like he's able to like work out the controls and everything. And like Robotnik like says, How? How did you do that? And he says, I read the manual. And he holds up this manual, and it looks exactly like a Mega Drive slash Genesis game manual which is stupid again the humor is really it's it's not pulling any punches guys it really is dumb but with rachel as well the whole bridezilla thing where like she's getting married and then she finds out that her husband is actually like a a, a gun agent working undercover to basically get closer to you know tom maddie and and, and indeed sonic and everything and she like goes driving around in this go golf cart chasing after him and everything and it, it, like i say it really is pushing it it's almost it's almost insultingly stupid quite frankly but at the end where like you know that they talk it out and they end up kissing again and like this plane i guess the tornado essentially but a plane flies past with like a banner saying maddie and the the guy's name forever in, the, in like slow motion it's like okay the movie is is clearly taking the mick out of itself and so i've uh, she was great and i'm glad that she did get more to do in this movie. One thing which I didn't expect at all actually is that we get Tails' backstory explained. I think like in the original computer game manuals, I think, I, I could be wrong guys, but I feel like in the Genesis Mega Drive gaming manual, it had an introduction of Tails, I think. I, I hope I'm getting this right. And it said how he was bullied uh, because he had these two tails, he was seen as a freak. Um, and there is like when they're in the Siberian bar, like you know, like uh, someone calls them freaks, Sonic and Tails, and it shows Tails' face, like look, like really heartbroken. And I'm thinking, is that actually going to be a reference to that? It actually is, because afterwards Tails goes into it. He says how he he didn't have any friends because he was basically ostracized because of because of you know, his his extra tail and everything. Love that they included that. They also included the fact that he's a fanboy for Sonic, which. After the first movie wouldn't really make sense, but it explains it how when Sonic was running around the baseball field in the first one and made that Sonic boom happen, uh, it triggered something off in, in radars on Tails' home planet, and so he was able to tune in like to, to where Sonic's location was, and he's basically been watching it like a movie, and it shows like him at home like watching Sonic like d doing his thing and just looking in awe of him. And so I love the fact that they were able to have Tails being this fanboy character, and he keeps on like saying, huh, only Sonic would do something like that, or only so Sonic would think of something like that. I love the fact that Tails is such a fanboy. I love the fact that they have um, Tails' voice actors from, from the games reprising the role in, in this. And I was worried going in, thinking, well, Knuckles is really going to be taking the shine off the fact that this is the first move with Tails in. But no, Tails gets a lot to do in this movie, guys, and he's very, very in instrumental. There is one bit when he's knocked out, and, like, um, and, like, Gun, like, captured him and everything. And I, I genuinely felt horrible for, for Tails, because Sonic's, like, saying, Tails, you need to wake up right now, and uh, Tails is just, like, completely knocked out and everything. Tails is adorable in this movie, guys. He really is. Um, they did it brilliantly, in fact. Knuckles is another character who's done really excellently as well. He's very tribal, and everything that he says is about honor and, like, uh, and, um, yeah, like, like, honor and things like that. It, 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 which I thought was great. I don't know if that is particularly a thing in any other. It's certainly not in any of the video games which I played, where he's, like, always talking about honor and justice. Yeah, and like Dishonor and so on and so forth. Um, Idris was fantastic in, in this role, guys. And by the end, he is a, a really lovable, goofy character as well. Because it's it's very nice, actually, how it, it like says how... Uh, Sonic is basically the one who, who, who like says the tales. He's not a bad guy. He he just sees me as this person who's who be, who's this enemy because of, you know, because of Longclaw and the Emeralds and, and all that. Um... So yes, he was excellently done. 
And as I was saying in the first part of my of this video, the stuff with uh, Sonic Tails and Knuckles in the final act is fantastic, guys. I absolutely adored it. And it actually explains what it gives Sonic a reason to be talking trash all the time. Because obviously in the, the games and everything, he's always calling, uh, you know, um, and the and the cartoons and everything, he's always mocking Robotnik all the time and everything. And in the movie, it actually explains why he's doing it. He actually he, he said he says that the that um, Robotnik's weak point is Sonic, but it's the way that that how angry Robotnik gets around him. And so he says all this stuff just to wind Robotnik up, so he lets his guard down. And so that was a really really nice explanation. Um. We also find out Robotnik's current plan because, like Sonic, like says, what, what, what is what is your plan and everything, and he says that he that he wants to enslave humans to work as his machines. I love that, guys, because that's obviously a direct reference to the original games. I don't think in the later games, when you destroy a robot, a little creature comes out. But uh, obviously, in the original ones, Robotnik's machines are powered by. The creatures that he captures in the, in the big tanks that you, that you release at the end of the levels, and when you think about it, that is an incredibly dark thing. It really is, and so um, I'm loving the fact that that is now back on on the cards with Robotnik, and because I never, really, uh, I thought that added added such an edge to Robotnik and the games, the fact that he is that crueler person. Whereas in the later ones, he's just someone who's trying to do something evil and then he gets stopped. But the fact that he's actually done something evil already by capturing these creatures and incarcerating them to work as his machines, I think really was a big reason of why it was... I mean, there was nothing like that back then in, in, in video games. And so I thought it was ingenious and it really gave Robotnik this terrifying edge to him. And I love the fact that they're bringing that back in the movies because, quite frankly, I think it should be in all the games as well. It probably is. There's probably some g game later on, like Colors or something like that, where they did like something similar. But that was another really nice reference to the old school games. Um, I guess I, I I don't know what to do, guys. I, I I'm not a movie reviewer. This movie's probably this video's probably ran off way too long. Uh, like I say, if you if you if you're very pernickety about things like um, you know Sonic not being able to being like ridiculously fast and then not being able to run fast at all, there are several moments in this guy. Is like I think there's one bit in the lab labyrinth zone where uh, Tails and and, uh, and Sonic are like, okay, let's get out of here, and they like turn around and like a door shuts. Whilst earlier on in the movie, like Sonic's able to slow down time down so much that he can literally just like you know walk around on these flying robots and everything because they're just basically static because he's moving so fast. Well, that wasn't the case consistently. That to me isn't a deal breaker, but you probably will notice things like that. Um, and just a couple more notes, really. I said about Wade having the, probably the funniest line in the movie. You have this uh, long claw moment where, like, you, there's a hologram of long claw, uh, and Wade, Sonic, and, and Tails are there, and like she explains the history between the the owls and the echidnas, uh, and how important why Sonic has been actually placed on Earth. And it's a very emotional, sad scene for Sonic, because you essentially find out that Longcrawl is most probably dead, which I didn't think was the case in um, in the first movie, but they do say that that, you know, that Knuckles is the last of either side of this war. Um, which is very sad and everything, but then you had this like moment where like they all just stood in it, like you know, in shock of, of, of just watching it, and then Wade turns to Tails and said, "So was that your dad?" <laughs> I thought that was the funniest line of the movie, guys. But yes, uh, that was amazing. There probably was more that I wanted to, to discuss in this, but I honestly can't quite remember. So let me know what your favorite parts of the movie were, uh, if there's any bits which you didn't like. Um, the dancing for me was the only bit where I was like, actually quite felt embarrassed watching it. Not only because it was the fact that they suddenly were able, able to start dancing, but then it introduces the fact that Tails could multiply, not multiply himself, but make uh, holograms appear. Um, of himself, but they, they're able to physically interact with Sonic. I, 
That was a weird time to do that. But yeah, that, that whole bit was questionable. But as a whole, I thought the movie was wonderful. And I'd absolutely watch it again. The last act. It explains Gotta Go Fast in a really nice way, guys. Because obviously that's like a, oh, I gotta go fast. I bet a lot of, I, okay, I bet every single other review video that you've seen of this movie, guys, has started off by the person going, oh, gotta go fast, and then referencing the original Sonic design from Sonic 1. I guarantee you that that is going to be in every single review movie, uh, review video of this movie, guys. I refuse to do that. But in this movie, it explains gotta go fast, because obviously Sonic's not we establish in this movie that he can't swim and you do have a horrible bit where he's he, he very nearly drowns later on but there is a bit where he has to run i think it actually said hundreds of miles across the sea uh to get to this island where where labyrinth zone is hidden um and like he's on the beach like getting ready and he says to himself gotta go fast because if he doesn't he's gonna drown and so i thought that was a really nice inclusion of that line i really did the humor is great in this movie guys i could go through more funny bits like knuckles saying i am also a hologram <laughs> and um and sonic's um I, I guess distraction that he sets up when he like goes out to try and fight crime he like leaves this like, like robotic version of himself in, a, in in the house so if anyone comes in he'll like say hey don't talk to me and everything like that it's hilarious as well very very funny movie but yeah all in all i thoroughly enjoyed it i this is such a i apologize guys if you got any feedback on how i can improve these sort of reviews please please do let me know because i don't know how to do review videos guys but i wanted to give you my two cents because it is sonic sonic was a big part of my childhood and i genuinely think this is a great movie with flaws just like the first one but in my opinion it's better i think that this is actually an improvement on the first movie Please don't subscribe, all the good stuff. I'm Vigil Gamer, and I'll see you next time.